Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions, my name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be talking about the brand new UVC G4 doorbell for Unify Protect. This is sort of the first like smart home device that Ubiquiti has come out with, well certainly since their old M5 stuff, which no longer exists. So I'm pretty excited to dig into this thing and uh, figure out how well it works. Coincidentally, I just moved into a new house, and so this will work out great <laughs> to actually install it on my house, which we're gonna do a little bit later in the video. But first, let's talk about the doorbell itself. The G4 doorbell is model UVC-G4 doorbell, and it's MSRP $199. Currently, it is sold out. So this records video from the camera uh, at 1600 by 1200, which is two megapixels at 30 frames per second. And they've got a number of adapters. They actually have a pretty good video online that shows how to install this thing. It says installs in 15 minutes. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, I would highly doubt if you could actually get this installed in 15 minutes, especially your first time. Uh, but what we have in the case here is a little quick start guide. So this is sort of the how to do the installation. There's no words on these, but it should be easy enough to read and figure out. Then we have the back plate, which also comes with this little uh, leveler device. So this sort of pops onto uh, the front here like this. And then once you get it screwed into the top, you kind of can level it uh, using the bubble and then pull this off and then finish screwing it in. Some mounting screws. And then you also have an angle bracket as well in case you wanna angle the camera. Now on my front door, I'm probably not going to use the angle bracket. Uh, I'm just going to try to see how the wide angle lens on the device itself works, considering that I have the doorbell right to the side of my uh, actual front door, and it's not really obstructed by anything. Now the way this device works is you plug this into your standard existing doorbell wiring, and there's some uh, boosters and stuff if you need them. I think this part goes on your actual sort of the interior part of the doorbell that is the box where you actually hear the noise. And then these parts here are where you connect the doorbell wires to the back of the unit. The doorbell wires also, it doesn't matter. Usually you get a red and a white. It doesn't matter which one of these you plug it into. The device is smart enough to know which is the red wire and which is the white wire. So that's it for inside the box other than a couple of uh, silica gel packets. Do not eat these. This also features integrated entrance lighting, so it looks like there's a little uh, LED light down here at the bottom. It ha does have a display as well, though I'm not sure exactly what uh, information displays on the display screen. It'll be interesting to see. You know, maybe when you press the doorbell button, it you know displays something to whomever pressed the button or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, it is built out of polycarbonate, so it's got a pretty solid feeling enclosure and it is IP rated at X4, meaning that there's no IP rating on the dust ingress, and the four means, and I quote, it is protected from water spray from any direction, but there's limited ingress protection from water. So basically, you know, most people are gonna have this next to their front door. If rain splashes on it, it's gonna be fine, but if you have sustained water pouring over it for a long period of time, you're probably gonna burn this thing out. All right, so enough talking about this thing. Let's go ahead and get it installed on my front door. All right, here we can see my original doorbell. And again, this is my front door. There's really no reason to use the angle bracket. I think I've got plenty of field of view from this position. And so the first thing we need to do is get this doorbell off, but that involves first turning off the circuit breaker. All right, here we go. I do not even know, this is brand, This is the first time I'm actually touching my own circuit breakers here uh, since I moved in, so I'm not sure. Jacuzzi? We don't have a jacuzzi. So first thing to do is figure out which of these circuit breakers is actually controlling the doorbell. All right, found it. It's number 12, and now we have labeled it doorbell so we know for the future. All right, first we're gonna take the old doorbell off. We're gonna do that with a Phillips head screwdriver. And here we have our two doorbell wires, which we need to disconnect. These actually look a little bit old, so I'm gonna clip these off and re-terminate them here.
Okay, so there we have it installed. The hardest part was getting those little uh, wiring nubs to get, you know, go back into that hole behind here. Uh, there just wasn't that much space and they weren't very flexible. So I had to take off the bracket and then push them through and then put the bracket back on and re-level it. But other than that, it uh, looks like it's in okay. And now let's go turn on the circuit breaker. Alright, there we go. No, don't know how easy that is to see, but it says ready for setup. Download the app. So let's go ahead and open up Protect. Alright, new device found. So I connected Protect to the same wireless network as my UNVR and it automatically says new device found. We're going to say add. And we're going to want to choose our wireless network, which is pretty fly for a Wi-Fi. Put in our password and hit OK. Connecting to Wi-Fi, weak Wi-Fi signal it says. That's okay, we can fix that by boosting it a little bit. All right, there we go, hey look, I can see myself. Name your camera so it can be easily identified. We'll just leave it as UVC G4 doorbell for now. We're gonna say next. Do you have a chime box? A chime box is the bell or noise making portion of the doorbell system. Uh, warning, using UVC G4 doorbell with chime box settings enabled but without a chime box can cause serious damage to the device. So we're gonna install with chime box. Are you sure you want to install with the chime box setting enabled? Yes. Enable notification. To receive a notification when someone rings your doorbell, en doorbell, enable push notifications. We're going to say add alert. And it says camera updating. So we're going to wait for this to finish updating and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, so it looks like it's good to go. You can see me on the screen here. Here's my camera, here's the doorbell. Let's see what happens if we press the button. Oh, and I see a, whoop, turn this noise off. All right, so it, oh, it went straight to my phone. And it says ringing. And then it went back to welcome. I want to hear what that said actually inside the house. I want to hear if the chime box went. All right, so it seems to be working pretty well. If I hit the button, it says doorbell. Someone's at your UVC doorbell. I can click it. I can see who's there, I can hear the audio, and then if I hit this T here, I can leave a message, like do not disturb, leave package at the door, or custom message, I can say custom message, and I'm going to say display. And so now it can display a custom message for a period of one minute, so like, oh, I said Chris talk, look at that, I, I typoed it because I, <laughs> I had the audio feedback going. Anyways, you can display a custom message to whomever is at the doorbell. Uh, one thing that it, I haven't been able to figure out yet, it doesn't seem like it can do uh, two-way audio. I mean, I know it can, uh, but I haven't figured out how that part works yet. So I'm gonna keep playing with it and see how we do that. All right, so I figured out you can talk through it. So if you click here, so we've got all these icons that pop up. This is to mute the audio from the device itself so I can unmute it and I can hear what I'm saying, right? This button over here, the little loudspeaker, that's to talk. So let me try hitting that here. You can turn this on. Test, 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 test. And we can see talking right there. We're talking, we're talking. I'll walk away a little bit so maybe you can hear it a little bit better. Talking, 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 talking. It seems like the volume might be a little bit low, but uh, it certainly does work as a two-way audio device. So yeah, so I'll see if maybe we can, oh, turn the volume off again. I'll see if uh, perhaps we can figure out how to increase the volume coming out of this little guy here, because right now with cars driving by and with the wind kicking up a little bit, it's uh, it's really quiet. Like you can't really hear it very well. The kit came with this piece right here, which I assume is maybe to provide supplemental power for the doorbell, or maybe this is to split it out if you have a front and rear. Now here's the thing, the instructions that it came with, look, turn off the circuit breaker, then open up your interior doorbell enclosure, then you want to hook this guy up to the interior doorbell enclosure, and then put it back on before you move on to the next steps, which are taking off the doorbell and hooking it up over here. Now, the video that they did about this 
does not have these steps included. So the video does not show this. It just shows taking off the doorbell and putting on the new one. So I'm gonna try without doing this stuff and then see if that works. And if it doesn't, of course, we can always come back and just add this, uh, this piece right here uh, to my internal doorbell enclosure if it seems like we need it. Installation is complete. It took me about 30 minutes total from start to finish, but also keep in mind that number one, I didn't know where the circuit breaker was, so that took me about five or six minutes to figure out. And number two, I'm filming the whole thing while I'm doing it, which definitely slows me down. One additional thing that I did not film too much of is I ended up installing that extra little uh, wiring block in the chime box. Okay, so inside the house where it actually goes ding dong, ding dong, I put that piece in there uh, and wired it up like it showed in the quick start guide just because I figured it's probably better to have it in there since they included it with the product anyway. So I put that in the chime box. Again, I don't know what kind of voltages uh, you know, a doorbell uses or anything like that. So I figured if anything, it's just gonna regulate the voltage or who knows what that piece does. If you guys do know what that piece specifically does, put that down in the comments below uh, and educate me on how doorbells work because I'm not, it's not my area of expertise. All that aside, now that this is up and running, let's take a look at what the UVC G4 doorbell looks like in Unify Protect. So here I am at my UNVR, which I have yet to do a video on, but I will do a video on soon at some point. And here we can see the UVC G4 doorbell. I'm gonna click on the doorbell. We get my little preview and I can see some of the stats about the doorbell itself. If I click on general, we have a lot of the same stuff that we get for most of the Unify cameras. So I can turn on or off the status sounds. I can turn on or off the status light. And then we have our overlay information. The way that I like to set up my overlays is I turn on time, uh, timestamp and I turn on camera name and I turn off the logo. Down here we have our recording quality. I'm gonna bump that all the way up to 30 frames per second. You know, I've certainly got plenty of disk space for the two cameras that I have in my UNVR, uh, but it's also better for when I make videos because everything I shoot here is in 30 frames per second. All right, so let's apply those changes. And now let's click on recording. So we're gonna set this to always record, but we're also gonna choose how to trigger our motion events. So we're gonna trigger motion events uh, of a minimum of two seconds. And then I wanna record five seconds before and five seconds after. That way, uh, this is again, it's always recording, but this way, this is basically our settings for when we're triggering a motion event that we can sort of scroll between motion events and sort of fast forward and not have to scrub through, you know, 24 hours of footage if we're looking at a full day type of thing. For our motion algorithm, I'm just gonna choose the old school stable algorithm, but you can choose to go to their newer enhanced algorithm if you choose. So for zones, I'm not gonna set up any motion zones or privacy zones for this camera. We're gonna click on manage and here we can reboot the camera. We can delete the camera. It does have RTSP. So I know some people were wondering about that online. This camera can do an RTSP feed. I'm not gonna personally do that on mine for now. Uh, if you wanna choose to disable the microphone on the camera, you can choose to do that. And you can also choose to uh, please select if your doorbell is connected to a chime as this will affect power usage. So again, mine is connected to a chime and I did put that extra little uh, you know, dongle into the chime box. So we're gonna leave that on. Now, interesting, I'm looking at my events here and it doesn't show any of the actual doorbell presses in the event log in Unify. I wonder if there's a way to show that or I wonder if perhaps you can only do that stuff through the app. Here we can see the live view of my doorbell. I can take a snapshot of it, I can go full screen, and that really looks like about it. Now if I click on the actual doorbell itself and then click on the thumbnail here, this is where we can actually change our settings. So I can put it into 1080p for instance, if I wanna look at it 1080p, oh, looks like I'm getting a delivery by UPS. Let's see if this doorbell thing works. What great timing, can you believe this? Look at this. All right, so this guy, usually they leave a package on the doorstep and then they hit the doorbell. Got my event right there. All right, so that worked. So look at what we have up here. We have doorbell ring. I did get an event in protect that says doorbell rang at etc. etc. And I did also get the pop-up on my phone. 
So that worked out really well. Thank you for testing out my doorbell, UPS. So if I click view live, yeah, it just brings up the doorbell again. And here, it doesn't look like I have the option to talk, to do the two-way speaker when I hit view live. No, it doesn't. So you can't do the two-way talking unless you're doing it through the app, it seems. But if we look at our settings for the camera, we can see most of the sort of stuff that we're used to. Microphone, brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, denoise, etc., etc., etc. So that's all pretty standard stuff. So now I guess the only thing left to cover is whether or not this is something that I would recommend for you to buy, right? So do I put my seal of approval on the UVC G4 doorbell? And I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna reserve judgment on that for a while. I wanna actually use it. Like literally I just installed it this hour, right? So I wanna actually use it and see how it works and uh, you know, work with the notifications and maybe try to talk back to people that have hit the, uh, the button, et cetera. I want to actually use this doorbell for a little while. So I'm gonna reserve judgment on whether or not you should buy this doorbell, but here's what I will say about it. I think the price is reasonable. 199 bucks is probably right in line with any of the other you know, ring doorbell type uh, smart doorbells that are out there. I haven't looked them up, but I'm guessing that that's probably about what you would pay for those. Uh, in addition, it was pretty easy to install. It came with everything that you needed. All I needed was a uh, Phillips head screwdriver and everything installed very easily in about, like I said, if you weren't filming it, probably would take you about 15, 20, maybe 25 minutes like they mentioned. There is also coming soon, I'm not really supposed to talk about EA stuff, but I feel I can talk about this. If you don't want to wire this doorbell up, to your actual doorbell wiring, they have a UVC doorbell power supply that you can purchase separately. It's 29 bucks, then you can just power it with the power supply and you don't have to worry about doing all the doorbell wiring stuff. So that's a good bonus too. And I'm not sure if Ring can do that as well. I don't know if there's a separate you know, power supply for the Ring doorbells or not, but it is a really nice feature that you have that option. Okay, so there you have it. My first look at the UVC G4 doorbell. What do you guys think about this device? Put that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. If you guys have any questions for me about the installation or usage of this doorbell, also put those down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.